There's more than everybody to do. Oh. This stuff doing, I was using my welder. And uh you got that when you got to where whenever I would hit the uh trigger, it would just keep right on feeding, it wouldn't shut off. And I wasted quite a bit of quite a bit of wire because I had to finish what I was welding. Because I have my wife when I got when I got close to where they ended this weld, I'd just say shut off and she'd shut the machine off and stop it from welding. But now I've already fixed it. But yesterday, before I fixed it, I went online to find out uh, what it could be because I'm not I'm not used to working on welders, and uh, I couldn't find anything on there. All it ever said was. Uh, my welder won't won't feed wire. It told you everything in the world if it didn't feed wire, but if it kept feeding wire, I found one video on it, and it was about uh, uh, a thirty or forty year old welder, one of them big industrial types, and uh, it wound up being the shielding in his. Uh, uh, line up here where it connected, uh, causing the pro uh, causing his problem. But I kept thinking mine might be in this handle because I do know a little bit how these work. It works similar to my my uh, plasma cutter, but my plasma cutter is not old enough to have any trouble out of it. I, I've had this for about five years. But anyway, I'm gonna take it apart. I'm gonna show you how I fixed it. And I'm doing this because I couldn't, well, it kind of ticked me off that I couldn't find anything on it on YouTube or online. I mean, I even called, I called the company and they have one of them chat lines. So I had to get my wife to, after she got off work, I had to get, get her go on there and, uh, Excuse me a minute. Trying to find a magnet. I got several of it. These are magnetized screws. Screws. But they don't pick nothing. Up. about that it was a wife she was we're having trouble with one of our cats he's sick and we're trying a new litter because the doctor says it could be allergies and he's getting up in age so it could be but anyway I've got this apart and uh, it's pretty easy to look it's pretty easy to take apart and get you look I cut you off by mistake I will never make a video autographer. Anyway, pull this switch out now. Yesterday, I took a picture up before I pulled it out because that way I can remember how it went back together. Anyway, you got a black, you got a wire on this side, a brown with white line, and this is a solid brown. And you just unplug it. Now, Now this was the problem on this one. I don't know if you can see this or not. Alright. Watch this button right here. Let's 
if you can turn it where you can see it. Alright. See how it pushes that bottom up? It pushes this contact into this one and it makes it turn the machine on the weld and it also uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, makes contact for it to feed wire. Well this button here, this little plastic button was getting stuck. It was going up too high and getting stuck. So what I did was I bent this I bent this this tab over, down a little bit more and over. And I also bent this one down down, but it's still in the same spot. It's still making it's not making contact now, you see. If you can see that, it's not making contact now. But when I want it to weld it will make contact and this button doesn't come up as high so what I did was I took this off you can take this I don't know what's wrong with this thing is not wanting to focus too good today you can take this off here with this little screw and these this whole section comes off and this button is left there by itself you can take it out and I put just a little bit of uh, Permatex on, I mean Permatex, well it's called Permatex, uh, that uh, anti-seize lubricant, ah uh, heck, yeah there it is, I put that on there, I tried uh, WD-40 and well PB Blast and it didn't, it didn't work, it just and I didn't work on that plastic. But that worked great on that metal. But if you have wire feeder, I mean, uh, a welder that won't uh, feed wire, that could be your problem. So now I'll put it back together. All right. Uh, And I'll also show you that it works. I've got it plugged up. Just got to be careful about hitting the wires to get myself bit. Alright. Now. See it beat. It's stopping now. Now, uh, I ain't got much wire on here. Uh, let me rewind it back in. Earlier this year, this this uh, feeder broke, and uh, this screw in here came loose, and I figured out figured it out right quick. Can't complain about the welder because it's been a good welder. Now yesterday I had a little trouble getting it back in here because I wasn't holding my mouth right. Everything's got a place to sit. Then you've got to turn it just the right way. Back together. Stick your wires back in there. Yeah, you can see me. I hope. Fairly easy to work on. Uh, I had to use it yesterday with it uh, having to get the wife cut it off my because I had to get that welded. I was making a, another uh, spare holder for one of my customers. You saw the one on my uh,
Mike. He killed the trailer and he liked it. And he said, Do me one like that. I'm running out of metal. I'm pretty sure I can find somebody. Can use that. That's what I use. Double check it. Yeah, now, let's see if it'll weld something. This ought to be all right. I ain't gonna wear much. Let me set you back here a little bit. I'm gonna get my shield. That's how you fix a welder that's not feeding wire. Okay. I have to put my weld put my welder up against the One of these days, you won't make me another shelf for my uh, plasma cutter. I'll probably do it this winter. Have more time, free time. But uh, that way, I won't have to keep putting my plasma cutter out 
and get back get back and forth into the box. But I always roll up my hoses and get my lines nice and tight. Not too tight. Oh, this one here will bend because it's got that feeding cable in it. You can run it. All right. Anyway, that's got it done on the welder. I'll be back in a little while.